conversations make you feel awkward or pushy, it's time to ditch the outdated salesy strategies. Your guide, Nikki Rausch, will show you how to combine kindness with selling skills to meet your prospects where they are, and in the process, how to up-level your influence and income. Learn how to earn business easily and effortlessly. Here's Nikki. Welcome, and thank you for listening to The Sales Maven Show. I'm your host, Nikki Rausch. I'm here to offer you tips, techniques, and strategies to master your sales conversations. Today's episode is a sales success story with one of our brilliant, amazing society members and VIP client of mine, Melissa Jacobs. Melissa, welcome to the show, friend. Thanks for having me, Nikki. It's wonderful to be here with you today. I'm excited to have this conversation. Now, please tell everybody a little bit about you and your business and who you serve and all that good stuff. Absolutely. So uh, I am the CEO and lead strategist at Crow and Pitcher, LLC. Uh, I'm a growth accelerator with over 20 years of experience increasing revenue for brands like Kleenex and Kotex. And mid-sized companies hire me to show them how to grow more by doing less. Uh, They innovate and reinvent and grow their businesses without increasing the size of their team or their marketing budget. Now, because I have some particular insight into your business, having got to do some deep dive work with you in these last couple months, you are, when I think about you, I think you're like the secret weapon that people bring in to their organization who goes in and like gets all the nitty gritty stuff puts it together and then lays out a plan of action for people. But how would you describe some of the ways that people can work with you? Because I know there's a few different options where people can bring you in, but what would you say? Absolutely. I love that summary. Um, I really love helping people get a handle on where they're at in their business and focus, make some choices, figure out what to say no to, In many, many cases, at least in my experience, uh, we have more ideas than we know what to do with, than we have the time or people or budget to to handle. And so there's a couple different uh, types of projects that I I do with my clients where I can come in in those types of scenarios and and, um, help them really quickly get moving faster in in the forward direction. So Uh, One of those is growth strategy or strategic planning work. If they just need to get a really good handle on um, where their business is today and make some choices about how to get to the next level of growth in the future. Um, Another way is really specifically looking at their data, looking at the drivers of their revenue. A lot of times we have a lot of hypotheses as to where we should put our money uh, to drive growth in our business and too many choices are on our on our plate. So we can take a look at the data and figure out what's actually driving our revenue growth and really focus our energy there. And then lastly, um, I also do some brand positioning work, similar um, approach. We lots of different ways that we can position our brands, lots of different um, marketing angles we can go down, um, but really using uh, customer-centric data and the voice of the customer to choose uh, how to position our brand in order to drive growth in the future. I love this idea of like, I think as a business owner in mid-sized businesses that you're working with, there are a lot of choices. There's a lot of avenues and there's a lot of voices oftentimes telling people where to go, what to do and have somebody like you come in and really show them how to eliminate choices so that they can really make a decision quickly and based on data, not just based on like gut instinct or like fly by the seat of your pants. Like, you know, I do a lot of times in my business, but to just be so much more strategic and have such a sense of clarity in that decision-making process and not waste time and energy and resources on things that are just not really driving business. Um, which I don't know if you would you would agree, but I know because I've seen some of your case studies that your clients benefit from having you come in and help them figure out like, oh, this area that we thought was generating revenue 
is really just eating resources and how if we eliminate this and we pour that same money over here, how that's going to really amplify and grow the business and scale it faster. Absolutely. When you when you use that data-driven approach to build your plan and make those choices, it's so much easier to stay consistent um, with your plan and not get knocked off track when the next new idea blossoms up. You know, certainly mm-hmm. there's there's always time when it makes sense to um, the data is new, something has changed, and we need to pivot. But more often than not, those new ideas become distractions, and they can come from, um, to your point, as you said earlier, you know, uh, just your own ideas, someone on the team. Um, it can be the person with the loudest voice. Mm-hmm. But, but when you when you build your plan rooted in data, if the data hasn't changed, it's much easier to go back to that plan and kind of stay rooted and stay focused. Yeah, yeah. I also just want to comment here, like one of the things that I think is so invaluable is what you bring to the table as far as your expertise, your background in corporate, working for these ginormous companies and doing this for them and now being able to take all of your expertise, all the things that you did there, um, which was significant, again, because I have a little bit of insight into you and what you've done and be able to do this for a mid-sized company as a consultant that they can bring in versus having somebody on the team full-time focused on it, which is probably an unrealistic expense, frankly. So I it also is. know it- you, <laughs> you save people money and time and you bring this incredible expertise to the table. Well, thank you for that. That's that's so generous. And you're right. I Having worked in you know, Fortune 500 company where they can afford to have somebody who is thinking more broadly, thinking more strategically, spending time to get into the data, building that expertise. Um, mid-sized companies just don't have that luxury of having somebody who's able to focus on that big picture all the time. It's the you know leadership who is delivering the day-to-day and dealing with every single day firefights uh, and really just getting the daily job done that's also trying to carve out time for those bigger picture ideas. They have them, they know what they are, but I've found that it's usually, you know, third on the to-do list and it's always third on the to-do list. You know, there's always something else that's that's more important. And so it's been really uh, wonderful for me to be able to come in and really quickly, you know, take those items off their plate and be able to make a difference and let them tackle some of those things that have been on the back burner, not because they're less important, but just because the day-to-day always takes up your time. Yeah, they don't really have the manpower or sometimes even the expertise to do what it is that you can do for them and do quickly. So I love the project-based business model that you have built. So we brought you on because you've been implementing, which I have to say delights me beyond any delight. I love implementers. I always say implementers get results and you are getting results. So can we talk a little bit about some of the things that you've been working on that you've implemented recently so that a listener can hopefully walk away from this and go, oh, okay, I feel inspired. I can do these things and, or I know what my next step should be in order to really start to amplify and grow my own business. Absolutely. I think a lot of people like me who come out of 20 years of corporate experience and start their own business and and want to almost in a sense give back, you know, use use your skills that you've built uh to help others like we were just saying that that don't have the resources to have somebody with those same experiences on their staff full time. Um, we love to do the work. We're good at the work and selling is a hundred percent new. Uh, mm-hmm. and so for me, um, earlier this year, I finished a really great project, um, with one of my clients, um, that gave me a lot of inspiration for how I could start to shift my business from every proposal and every project being completely custom, which I think is how a lot of us start, Mm -hmm. um, to starting to 
build more specific offers, more specific services, pillars. Um, and that's where I was at when we started working together. Mm -hmm. And you helped me so much to figure out the right content to build those offers and um, help me tweak all the language to, um, you know, build service pages and PDFs that are kind of like sell sheets. And one of the things that I found really, really interesting and, and sort of didn't expect in the journey was that as I got to the sort of end of that part, that part felt while I needed your help with all the content, you know, building the documents felt familiar and something I know how to do. I knew this sort of next part was coming. This next part was looming of like, okay, it's time to actually go and start talking to people and mm -hmm. expanding the network and planting the seeds. And, and I was, I was dreading that part for sure. Um, it's so, so new, you know, another part of working in a big company for a long time is my network is fairly siloed. And so I've got a lot of work to do to really meet new people and, and expand. But, but what I found was that as I was coming to the end and I had those pieces ready, all of a sudden it was much less scary to start the business development piece of, of doing the network. And so our work together really uh, sort of made it easier for me to tackle the next step that felt new and difficult. Which I will say that, again, that makes my heart so happy for you because to see your confidence grow, you know, from when we started kind of where you were really honing and simplifying the packages. And I find that that is one of the things that often holds people back from kind of going out and meeting new people and expanding their network and and really doing what I think of as business development activities is because they're like, well, what if somebody asked me how to work with me? I don't know what to say because I need them to tell me what they need in order for me to build a custom proposal. And that kind of took that, um, like it, it, it took that, I don't want to say excuse, but it took like that objection that you have to building a network away because you're like, oh no, I have these clear offers, these clear ways to work with me. And, you know, you did such a brilliant job of um, putting some, some um, really beautiful content in front of me to be able to edit and refine, you know, and offer you some tweaks to where now your slide deck, your offers, your, your, you know, those PDFs that you created, your case studies, all of that stuff. It's so beautifully laid out. It's so crystal clear for somebody to be able to look at it and go, okay, I know what you do. But now for you to have this confidence of like, I can put this in front of anybody at any time, I'm ready to go for any sales conversation, any prospective like potential client, I can go out and have a legitimate conversation with confidence about what I bring to the table. And um, it's been fun to watch you do this. And you're doing the part that I will say clients often are like, oh, I don't want to do that part, Nikki. I don't want to have to do these reach outs. But, you know, we worked on that stuff too together of like, what's the messaging to make it easy? And I feel like once you started rolling, like you were off to the races. You were like, okay, those first couple, like, okay, kind of coach me through it a little bit, Nikki. And then you're like, okay, now I've contacted this person. Now I've done this thing. Now I've reached out to this person and this person opened a door for me. And I, I asked for an introduction here. Like you are such a great implementer. It's so good at what you do. And it's fun to see your confidence around this too, I will say. Well, thank you so much. That's wonderful. So wonderful to hear. And I think I will just return the uh, amazing accolades back to you as well, because, you know, it certainly has been such a increase in my tool set and just being able to get your perspective, you know, um, when you think about those, like the email is coming or the conversation is coming and you can either you know, sit at your desk and decide this is how I'm going to go after it and wonder if that's a good approach or by having, you know, our relationship, I'm able to get, you know, a quick check-in with you, 
maybe there's a little tweak, maybe there's a big tweak, but the level of confidence and almost comfort, I think is a good word that, that I get after getting your feedback. It's sort of like, okay, well, there's no other barriers. You've just gotten kind of the feedback from the coach, from Nikki, who's amazing. Let's do it. You know, there's nothing else standing in your way. And and there were certainly moments as I was kind of finishing up all those documents and, and finishing up all that work that I thought, and it, and it took me a couple of weeks longer than I had kind of anticipated in my brain. I started to wonder, am I just dragging my feet? Like, is this just... Um, is this just me trying to put off and avoid the harder part as long as possible? Um, and then, you know, after taking that time, it was, you know, really validated for me, like, no, this was time well spent to, you know, get everything ready so that um, that confidence came to say, not only did it, did I have language to use that I didn't have before in, in having to finalize all those documents. Um, but also to your point, as you said earlier, um, they were ready to go. There was nothing holding me back and, and it was, it was time to get out there and, and start meeting new people. Which you've done. I mean, prior to us actually hitting record on this podcast, I know you're just off of a very successful sales call that you had and you followed the process and you have your circle back call scheduled and there's a proposal that's been put in front of this person and you did that very confidently. And um, it's just, I love to watch you soar. And I know that like the sky's the limit. There's no stopping you now. You continue to you know, hone and put your message out there and build your visibility in the marketplace because there's such a need for what you offer. Um, so it's just really, it warms my heart <laughs> to see, to see you. you soar. I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for you. And I'm so excited for your clients too, frankly, and all the benefit they're going to get from working with you. And that's one of those things, like it's so hard to build a business when you don't really know what your offer is. And so you, you have to have an offer, right? To really sell something there. You have to have something to sell in order to build a business. And so for anybody that's listening, if you're struggling with just even putting together kind of what your offering would be or, or a few offerings so that, you know, you have a few things to talk about I encourage you to to reach out and get support, whether it be through me or some other entity, somebody who can help you put their eyes on it and help kind of refine that for you. Because if that's the thing, if you're if you're thinking, well, I'm just going to build a website and people are going to flock to it, like that just doesn't happen. And you have to put yourself out there. And business development is a part of business period, like lead generation has to be something that you're able to do. Um, so like seek resources because there are resources out there and get, get over that objection of like, well, I don't have anything to talk about. So I just won't talk about it to anybody. Well, your business will never grow otherwise. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So super excited for you. Super excited for what comes next. Um, you also are a member of the Sales Maven Society. I think I mentioned at the beginning, like, yes, we've been doing some one-on-one -on -one work, but as a member of the Sales Maven Society, what has been one benefit for you from being in that group? Well, I've absolutely loved being in that group. And it, I think like many people was my first exposure to you. And so I got to learn um, directly from you in that environment. And one of the things that I really love about um, your program is the library of of lessons, the library of tutorials. Um, there's so many different things out there. And of course, when I first joined, I had so much to learn and and I just gobbled them up. But I find even now that I've been through a fair number of them, there are times where I just need like a little hit of inspiration or motivation. And I can go take 15 or 20 minutes and, and listen to you talk about any particular topic, right? It might be something that I'm struggling with that day, or or maybe it's just kind of overall sales tip. But I find that getting that like 
you know, even just 15 minutes of somebody else's point of view um, can really be a catalyst for me to to get moving uh, in my business on any given day or week. So, um, of course, all the elements of the society are amazing, but that's one that that I certainly have benefited from. I love to know that you're utilizing the library of trainings and using those resources. I know a couple months ago when we um, did the member appreciation month, you were rocking it in participants and, you know, given, uh, given some people some run for their money, it felt like there was this constant, like you getting ahead and then somebody else getting ahead and you getting ahead. And so it was fun to, to watch you really dig in there as well and really embrace what was there for you so that you took advantage of it and, and it's paying off, which is even more exciting. So, yes. Yeah. I do love a good competition. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the person I'm referring to that you guys have now, uh, not only were you great competitors uh, with each other, kind of driving each other, but now there's some collaboration that's happening, which is pretty freaking exciting for me, I will say, to get to Absolutely. sit back and watch two of my favorites go off and uh, grow their business and look for ways to collaborate, which is fun. Absolutely. Okay. Last question here for you, for people listening who may need some support from what it is that you offer and or know a mid-level size, you know, or mid-sized business is what I'm trying to say, that would benefit from your skill set. What's the best way to get in touch with you? Absolutely. Well, my uh, social media of choice is LinkedIn. So if you're listening, please come say hi on LinkedIn. I'd love to meet you. Um, and then of course, the other place, to find more information about me and my business is at my website uh, where I've also got a free gift that I'd love to provide for your audience, Nikki. Um, and it is a quick read that summarizes five really common scenarios where you can actually grow your business more by doing less. So things like wondering if you've got uh, way too many marketing tactics and how you might choose among them, or if you've got all your time going against, you know, maybe a client that's a squeaky wheel customer, but maybe isn't the best one. Those are just two of the five scenarios, but you can find that at uh, my company's website, crowandpitcherllc.com slash grow. We're going to have Melissa's contact information in the show notes. So you can grab that link there. And just because I think it's a super interesting story, would you, and I didn't tell you, I was going to ask you this. Would you be willing to share how you came up with the name of your company, Crow and Pitcher? I'm fascinated by this story. I love it so much. And I always like to know how people come up with the names of their companies. So if you're willing to share, I think it would be fun for the audience to hear. Oh, absolutely. So I was, you know, looking for something that had meaning for me. And I did, of course, tons of different searching, but um, the story of where Crow and Pitcher came from is actually one of Aesop's fables, like Tortoise and the Hare, I think we're probably all familiar with. There are 12 in total. And so the story of the crow and the pitcher is that a thirsty crow is in the desert and he comes across a tall pitcher with a little bit of water at the bottom, but his beak is too short and he can't reach the water. But he is a smart and persistent problem solver and he's creative and he looks around and kind of assesses his current situation and sees that there are some small pebbles around. And so he picks up the pebbles with his beak and puts them in the pitcher and that makes the water level rise and he's able to quench his thirst. And I was really inspired by that. And I did a little more research on it and found that researchers in New Zealand actually did this study and crows will actually... Uh, solve this problem. They have these particular skills. It's actually true. Uh, and when I found that out, that they're these, you know, smart, determined, creative problem solvers and really thought that was a good encapsulation of me and the way I like to work as well, I was sold. And that's when I named my business Crow and Pitcher. It's such a great story. You know, I love a story. So, oh, I love <laughs> it so much. Thanks for sharing it. All right. So as we wrap up, thank you so much, Melissa, for being here. Thank you to you, the listener, for showing up. I hope you found some inspiration in some of the things that Melissa shared, uh, particularly this idea of really getting clear on what your offers are and then 
taking action and going out there and doing some business development because it will make a difference. It does make a difference. It pays off. So do what you need to do to get anything that's causing you from stopping doing it now. Get like get that out of the way. Solve that problem so that you can go and do your business development activities because this is how you're going to really scale your business. So, all right. Thank you for being here. If you would like to join us in the Sales Maven Society and you haven't yet, come do that. The, there's people like Melissa hanging out in there. You can't beat this. How great these gr this group of people are. And of course, you'll get access to the training videos that Melissa had mentioned as well. You can join the Sales Maven Society by going to salesmavensociety.com. And if you put in the coupon code 47 trial, it'll knock $100 off your first month of membership. We would love to have you in the group. Come be here. Or if I can support you in some way, reach out, go connect with Melissa on LinkedIn and have a great rest of your day. Take care, everyone. Thanks for listening to Sales Maven. Visit us online at yoursalesmaven.com slash maven for more resources to boost your confidence and skills.